Welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude. And as you can see here, I have a pile of mess. Um, this is a pile of parts for the Matilda Mark III slash 4 British Infantry Tank. Um, as I mentioned in a previous video, I had to uh, you know, do the full disclosure thing and talk a little bit about a major screw up I did, which was gluing the wheels wrong. Instead of gluing the wheels where they had a big gap in the middle for the center portion of the track here, I had one of them flipped to where there was a very, very tiny groove. Why I did that, I don't know, and I did every single wheel like that. Glued them on, everything. So. I talked in that video about what I was going to do to rectify the situation. That was basically cut off the bottom half of all the inside wheels. Um, just looking at it from like this, you can't really tell. If you turn it sideways, you kind of can. Uh, it's even less noticeable with the tracks on. Um, as a matter of fact, it's really not noticeable very much at all. But uh, another thing I'm going to use, another something I'm going to do to uh, kind of disguise my mistake um, is uh, muddy up the running gear and the tank really well because it's going to be a tank based in, uh, in England during the war, a training tank. Because initially because I wanted to do different colors, but now because, you know, I don't think they have a lot of caked up mud over there in Africa during the war, but... Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. So the hull is pretty much done. I'm uh, working on some of the parts, the spare fuel tank. Um, I have a little bit of seam sanding to do on that side and a little bit here. But it's going together pretty well. Uh, the muffler and exhaust, uh, a little bit more cleanup to do on that. But mainly, in this segment, of this video I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the exhaust pipes. Now the exhaust pipes as you can see they're quite long and they come out of the vehicle from way up here and they wrap all the way around. So it looks like what they did, the British that is, is they um, wrapped it in some kind of heat resistant tape or asbestos even I don't know what it was but it's supposed to be like a fabric type thing and the molding is really really nice on here but to alleviate looks like what they did to alleviate some of the uh, seam line because what, what happens is you run into a real problem with seam lines on uh, stuff with texture or springs anything like that things don't line up the way they're supposed to and if you sand the seam you sand off a lot of the detail but it looks like what they might have done here now there's some cleanup I'm gonna have to do and I'm gonna lose a little bit of the detail but it looks like they in strategic places what they did this thing will focus is where the seam line is is that's where the it, it's really pronounced here and there like that's where uh, that's a point where the tape ended as they were wrapping it, or the cloth, whatever it is. So it's kind of a cool idea to lend credence to the fact that there is a seam there without actually making it look too much like a seam. So that's kind of a cool little tricky thing they did there. You know, maybe they didn't do it on purpose. Maybe it's just really poorly molded in certain spots, but um, it looks really good. And with just a little light sanding, I'm not going to lose too much of the detail, I don't think. You know, because it is going to have paint and some weathering on it. So, anyway, um, that's where it is. That's uh, step 18. I've moved right along, actually, on this. I mean, a lot, I had pretty much everything done up to step 9 when I discovered my mistake. So, um, I just went on with working on the hull and... Uh, those parts and this is not one of those kits and I mentioned it in some of my other videos about the new Tamiya kits the, the way they engineer these things is um, they really do a good job 
of giving you a way to put these together. And basically what happens is this, well, you know what, I can take it apart and show you. That's how cool it is. There's a peg in the back, and then there's this place here where you put a couple of the, uh, see if I can get one without dropping all of them. These poly sleeves, they call them poly caps, but it's more of a sleeve because it's open on both ends. Uh, they give you these, uh, which are commonly used in the wheels and stuff. And you drop a couple of those in there and then you put this retaining cap on it. Then, and this is the same way it was on the Panther tank I built recently and the um, M4A3 E8 Sherman. Uh, basically the same type of structure. The front has a place where it you line it up and it pops in place underneath something there with like really close tolerances and they and they put the seam in a place where there really would be a seam and then the back just slides into place like that and uh, you're good to go. You can cement it in place or not cement it in place. Um, on the other, the only kit I think I cemented in place was the uh, Panther, the other one I left. But pretty nice, and you know, it's kind of nice the hatch opens here. I don't know what good that would do unless you were putting a, I guess there might be a driver to put in it, but it's kind of cool. You can have it closed or open. Closed or open. Kind of cool. Um, so that's pretty nice. So anyway, that's where I am on this kit. Just thought I'd uh, touch base real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and work on a few more steps and then uh, talk a little bit more about what I find if I find anything interesting. All right, here's where I am. Uh, the hull has been completed in its entirety, except for spare tracks and some of the tools and the fuel tank. The turret has also been completed. Everything fit together nicely, no problems. Uh, one note I will make is if you are doing this kit, make sure you pay attention to some of the verbiage here as to which version of this vehicle you are doing. For instance, um, pay close attention to all these instructions here. For instance, right here, it says make these holes when building a C-type model, which means this one right here, 49th Royal Tank, Tank Regiment in England in 42. Um, if you're building the other versions, they don't have some of the parts, so you don't want to go poking holes in it if you don't need to, because you have to drill holes out. So some things you drill holes in regardless. For instance, these three here, you don't, okay? So make note, uh, take special note of that, and it will mention that again um, further along in the instructions, such as right here. Um, these optional parts are only used, this is where you drill those extra holes um, for the C type, okay, so that's just something to, to make note of. Now, let's see, and then I have the side skirts here as well. I have not attached those because um, if you've watched any of my videos, you probably know that I like to uh, leave the sides open and the tracks off for weathering purposes. So what I'll do is I'll be taping off the uh, contact points where the cement goes on the side skirts and on the vehicle. That way I can prime and paint and uh, keep the contact points clean um, so I can uh, you know, glue everything on when the time comes. Uh, the tow ropes are done. Pretty easy. Now, I was originally going to use uh, the uh, vinyl tracks um, or the uh, flexible styrene tracks um, and the reason being is you know the t they number one they're they're really snug um, what little sag there might be on a vehicle like this would be hidden behind 
uh, these side skirts. Okay, so I was going to use these just for the ease of it. But on second thought, I've decided that I want to try, since I've never done it, um, the Lincoln Length type track system. And I've already cut off one piece. And uh, the reason I want to do this is number one, I'm not going to have to worry about painting these really well because I am, because of my mistake that I made on the wheels, the road wheels, uh, I'm going to be doing a very muddy vehicle. Uh, and this whole business down here is going to be uh, pretty muddy, so you're not going to really see the track color itself. It's going to be covered in mud and dirt. Um, so, you know, just to try out this type of track, that's what I'm going to do. So, I'm going to end this video, uh, or this portion right here, and I will come back after I have these installed. And here it is, painted. Um, I went uh, with that scheme for England 42, and uh, it's really kind of cool. I like it. I really like this scheme. Um, the color, I don't know if I mentioned it, but is XF52 Flat Earth. And then um, the darker camo color is uh, Flat Earth and NATO Black. And it's supposed to be flat black, but I don't have any, so I use NATO Black. And I like the way it looks. It's kind of fady looking. But as you can see here, um, my uh, mishap with the wheels really not that noticeable I mean if you know what you're looking for you can see it um, if you don't you'd really be hard-pressed to notice that those back wheels are gone so you know everybody out there in YouTube land on my channel knows but hey you're my uh, faithful subscribers friends so figured I'd uh, share that with you and I did go with the um, the Lincoln length tracks and I have to say I really like the way they turned out um, one thing that's kind of important with Lincoln length tracks is you got to get them lined up right so you don't end up with weird kinks there's nothing worse than a kink you know a really sharp angle on the uh, Lincoln length tracks so there's that. And then I have all the rest of the uh, little parts that have to be attached still. I've got those painted. All that's painted, ready to go. Um, fuel tank has been, uh, had the camouflage applied as well, the two-tone scheme. So with that, I'm going to end this video uh, because the next step um, in between now and the next video, I'm going to be applying a clear coat over the whole thing. Um, actually, I'm going to do some detail painting. So I'll do the detail painting, um, get all that ready, and then I will come back uh, on the next video, show the stuff that I detail painted, and then uh, then it'll be on to a clear coat, and then decals. So anyway, that's it for now. On the Matilda project, uh, thanks for watching. Questions, comments, blows per usual. Thanks for joining me here on Plastic Models by Regular Dude, and I will see you all next time.